I will tell you what, it has been a very busy past month and a half here in the Low Country. And I am out here on the Mount Pleasant Pier here in South Carolina. And you know, Flounder have been all over the place, been having a great time with Flounder. But you know, my last episode right off this pier, um, I showed everybody this uh, massive Jack Revelle here, over 30 pounds that I had caught here out on the pier. Um, what a fight, I'll tell you, but it has been busy. We have been catching a lot of flounder, like I said, trout, and more. Um, and of course, uh, I've even done some surf fishing. And uh, in this episode, we're going to see what I'm talking about. All right. That's more like it. Now we're talking some dinner. <laughs> That's nice. One. That one's gonna go to the cooler. We'll have to get ice in a little bit. I'll go put some water in it. Is that nice? Yeah. You got me back for that, huh? Small, I think it's a little bit smaller than yours. Man, I barely got him. I cast it out into the drift, way out. I didn't even cast in the rocks, I cast it way out, that's why I went to this. <laughs> now you've probably noticed I am not using uh, surf rods here. I'm using regular 7 foot 6 uh, light medium action rods, 20 pound test on the bait caster, 15 pound test on the spinning rod. I am waiting in the surf, casting out Carolina rigs with finger mullet out to the jetties and the eddies that are created uh, right off of the beach. That's it.
So the reason we netted him, so I didn't rip his lips off trying to reel him up in the air. I wasn't sure it looked like I had him just by the lip. So I wanted to make sure I didn't damage him. You're all probably wondering what bait I'm using to target red drum flounder and spotted sea trout. I'm using a Carolina rig with a kale hook, and I'm using live finger mullet I catch right here at the pier. Okay? <laughs> so we've been doing pretty good out here on the Mount Pleasant Pier, especially when it comes to flounder uh, this season. So that was uh, me. I had to uh, pick on my buddy Ken there netting for me there. He had got his uh, landing net tangled up, and <laughs> I had to pick on him. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into some more scenes, and I'll show you all these flounder we've been catching. guys that's a good day flounder fishing right there sure was there's a flounder So this is how you know when a flounder bites your bait and you miss it. See those teeth? And see how their teeth are cornered like this, zigzag, the angle? That's how flounder teeth are. They're very staggered and angly. And that's a flounder bite. And I missed it. <laughs> Hurt my feelings. Let's see if I can get them back. 
Well, as you can tell, the flounder bite has been fantastic here the past month and a half, maybe even a little over. Um, I still expect they're going to be biting pretty good. You know, flounder usually don't head out of the low country till uh, the late November, you know, and hence the name Summer Flounder. Um, they will go out to sea for the winter, and winter here is usually, you know, late December through January and February, and then flounder, the summer flounder come back in in March, end of March. Anyway, you know, we are now in October, and, um, you know, I love Halloween myself, and uh, I love to celebrate the month of Halloween, especially even out here on the pier. Uh, enough of that. Let's get back out here on this pier. Let's get a little bit more fishing in. All right. Okay. So, you know about all these big flounder and all these average flounder that I've been catching on the pier. But we also have been catching spotted sea trout and red drum. So, let's check some of those out.
So, as you can tell through the past month and a half, we have caught plenty of spotted sea trout and red drum as well. We had a good time. Now remember, there are different techniques you can use out here on the Mount Pleasant Pier or in the surf, but these techniques work. Now, these were all caught using finger mullet with Carolina rigs, which is very simple. It doesn't have to all be the same size Carolina rig. You can tie different size Carolina rigs. You can tie them with heavier weights, lighter weights, lighter leader lines, smaller hooks, or you can be heavier weights, heavier line, bigger hooks. Just depends on what you're using for bait and how big your bait is. So I'd like to say to all my fans out there, thanks for watching. I appreciate you watching. For all of you watching for the first time, do not forget, look down. There is a subscribe button. It only lets you know when I have more shows available. And you know, if you are interested in trying or learning any of the techniques you saw in this video, don't forget, I am a inshore and freshwater guide and a fishing instructor. So if you're in the low country, look me up. Give me a call, send me an email. I might be able to help you out with your next fishing adventure. All right, like I always say, good luck out there. Have fun fishing. Catch you next time.